Este es pendejo. ¡Ey, carnal! ¡Ey! ¿Tienes un problema? This guy looks an awful lot like one of those scavengers we took out earlier. Something tells me that wasn't no coincidence, huh? Jackie's car is a super-powered sports car running on Chew 2 the super fuel of the future. Players can explore Night City freely, in many different cars, on bikes, and in other types of vehicles. This does not look good. Puta madre! Grab the wheel, Jack! Oh, fuck! It looks like the scavengers from earlier are still angry. They're pulling ahead, Heine. Watch it now. Got it. All right. I think we got rid of him. That was intense. Ah! Shit! The fuck was that? Devils. Night City never sleeps. Danger lurks around every corner, even in daytime. Random encounters like these are an example of how your actions directly influence your open world experience. Let's get the fuck out of here. Okay, Jackie. So, they're done riding our asses? Scavs? Uh, sure, maybe. Should be looking for a new spot to slice and dice, not gunning after us. But, who knows? Real messed up pendejo, Scavs. Saw it yourself. Many forces are fighting for control of Night City, but the mega corporations are the real showroom. The agent we're going to meet represents Militech, one of the largest companies in the private military sector. Where are we stopping? Remember the corpo off Dex's shard? Ranger, she's in the area. And we're gonna meet. Let me guess. Yes. See if I can, yeah. Since Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG, preparation will be Instead of just rushing, let's assess the situation with our freshly installed Kiroshi optical scope. Let's take a closer look. Composite armor. Car's a fucking tank. Try to approach. Out. Take it you were the one to call? Yep. <laughs> Subjected us to a kind of lie detector program. The dialogue system in Cyberpunk 2077 is fully gameplay driven. I asked if you came alone. Yep, just little old me. She's lying. Search the area. Now listen, we don't need to be here. This piece of shit, Anthony Gilchrist. Did he or another asshole at Militech leak info to you or anyone else about a conflict? It might be tempting to reach for the gun, but the consequences could be dire. Remember, these guys are really tough. Shit. 
checks out. <laughs> you got nothing on me! Nothing! Won't get away with this, you bitch! You're dead! Somebody shut him up. Take me home! Now! All right. I have no idea who you're working for or what you even want, but you better give me something solid or I will end you. I've got an offer. Oh, you are stretching. This better be fucking good. Gang goons who ripped you off? I know where to find them. They got a bot I want. Give me the funds to buy that bot. You can do what you want with the gang. I don't give a shit about the thieves. I want my mold. Credship, 50k. Just enough to buy you your bot. Thing is, Chip's gotta make it into the thieves' terminal. That's all I need. Think you can do that? Then we got a deal. Fine. I'm in. Try to fuck me in any way, and I'll be seeing you real soon. You're making a mistake! This cunt's good as dead! And she'll take you down with her! The agent gave us the money to buy the bot we need from the gang. By choosing to call the Militech agent earlier, we have now opened up a non-violent path through this quest. Of course, we could try and keep the money, but that would mean we'd have to take the merchandise by force, which requires a lot of firepower. It looked a little fishy, you know? A little tense. No signal, so I stay put. Good thing, too. Went down about like I expected. Made a deal, and we're good to meet with Maelstrom now. Mm-hmm. Be there soon. What do you expect? Corpse don't forgive or forget. Even these Borg fucks sense that. Feel the pressure. That's why they're holed up in this shithole, praying to the almighty Trip Six. Gotta move the tech, but they can't. Cause your new best friend from the tripped out, tanked out SUV is just begging them to try. How you wanna do this? Even now, we can choose how to approach this quest. Do we go in guns blazing, or do we try to negotiate All right. for the bomb? Plan's simple. We pay with the Corpo's cred and get out. I don't know, but. You're calling this one. For this demo, let's try oh, the more diplomatic approach. Uh, Tough shit. All we need's for them to buy it. <laughs> Don't know you. Wanna talk to Royce? Main room. I'm waiting. <laughs> Damn well prepared. All strapped with Militech gear. Psycho Borgs chromed out with military grade hardware worth millions. Should be fun. The guys we're about to meet are dangerous. They are members of the Maelstrom gang, and their obsession with body modification goes way beyond even this world's standards. On their path to becoming machines, they don't shy away from even the most extreme measures. Anti personnel mine. Shrapnel's better. Hmm. My favorite. And goons getting creative with their gear. It looks like they made this abandoned All Foods meat factory their hideout. Charming. Another one? Seriously? Maybe we should have taken them by surprise. A little late for regress like that. Got us in their sights now. Just keep moving. Just trying to spook us. Remember, we've chosen to buy the tech, not steal it. Hopefully, this will go yeah, fast no, and easy. Cheap. This is a pretty well guarded place. You can imagine mm. what would have happened if we'd taken the violent path. What? Looking to buy a bot. Model MTOD-12. Looks like a spider. Couch planted. 
Yo, Kerr, peek around the corner, see if we got anything like that. Well, shit. Sit down. I'll stand. Can't move on your culo. Makes you an easy target. Sit down. That really necessary, hombre? I ain't your hombre. Sit. Sit your ass down before I plant a bullet in your skull. Jack, sit down. This ain't gonna end well, but... Shit. Well, all right, fucking bravo. Come on, lighten up. Have a whiff. Better. Now we can talk. The bot. Need to see it. Suit yourself. Fucking tricked out, state of the art this thing. Don't even got no standard port. Bells and whistles, though. Dynamic camo armor and motor impulses rivaling that of the human nervous system. Its actuators are actually pimped with titanium fiber, and it can go anywhere. Literally. Watch this. Fully integrated link, too. So when the spider starts crawling up walls, dangling from ceilings, you could lose your lunch. So, what you think? Hey, up and let's get the fuck out of here. The buck. I'll take it. Two questions. What the fuck's going on? And who the fuck is this? Got 50 large on this crutch. And you positively reek of Militech. Dexter Deshaun sent me. Dexter Deshaun, dreads, gold plate, fat old fuck, that him? <laughs> we'll pay for the bot, be on our way. How much you say you had? 50k? Creds on this. Move it. Ooh, not the smoothest of deals, but it worked out in the end, right? Flathead's good gear. It'll do the trick. Whatever that trick is. Shit. Shit, shit, shit! <laughs> It turns out the cred chip we got from the Militech agent contained a virus which off. fried their system. The the Royce, their leader, is making a break for it. Had to end this way. Before we figure out a way to leave, let's grab the splinter that controls the bot from one of these dead maelstromers. The inspection system allows us to take a closer look at the splinter. You can inspect specific items to reveal details that can help in solving quests. Okay, let's equip the splinter to our chipware store. With this done, the bot will now follow us wherever we go. All right, what else do we have here? Nice. Street modified tech shotgun. Tech weapons fire rounds that penetrate walls and other types of cover. They also have an alternate fire mode that allows you to power up shots and deal more damage. It looks like there are several ways out of this room, like those gates, for example. However, you'd have to be a skilled netrunner to hack into this terminal. Luckily, our engineering skills should allow us to disassemble that maintenance panel so we can get through the door. Got it. There are many skills right in the game you. that players can apply in solving problems. The engineering skill can be used to fix, disassemble, and disarm the devices blocking the Production your line path. passes through here. And we're gonna pass through with it. 
So, from this point on, we're going to unlock the abilities of a high-end character to showcase some of the different mechanics we have in the game. One of the new weapon modules we now have installed is a ricochet targeting system connected to our eyes. This allows players to bounce bullets off walls and hit enemies hiding behind cover. This is another targeting system that will reveal enemies behind walls. Paired with the penetrating rounds of our tech shotgun, it's a deadly combination. Looks like we found some loot. This is a smart gun. It's one of the more advanced weapons in the game allowing bullets to track and follow their target. It's one of many different weapons players can acquire. Weapons are built of modules that allow for deep customization and progression. This way, you can be sure to find something that will suit your place. The toughest bastards guarding this round. Probably some reason for that. Motherfucker! Just a reminder, everything you've seen and are about to see, including this particular feature we're about to show you, is from a work-in-progress version of the game and may change over the course of development. Okay, all that shit's covered? Okay, let's try something different. We're going to take this guy down and connect directly to his neural side. In the world of Cyberpunk, once you are jacked into a network, you have access to everything it connects to. Through this Maelstrom gang map, we've now connected to the gang hideout's internal network. This is the building's personnel system. Let's focus on the squad containing the Maelstrom ganger we just connected to. From here, we can deploy software that affects the whole squad. For now, we'll simply unlock the ability to perform quick hacks. All right, time to show off our new high-level abilities. With Quick Hack, using the back door we unlocked a minute ago, we'll install a virus that jams the connection between the Maelstrom Ganger and his weapon. This will prevent him from firing. Ah, just the hell is Looks like he's having a problem now. Nice. Some of you might recognize these Mantis Blades. We can also double jump and bounce off of walls which makes us a very agile, fast solo. I'll check down here. Sweet, we just found a corporate tech rifle. Corpo weapons are top of the line. Let's scan this guy and see what's going on. 
It looks like Royce is back, and he's prepped. He's got an armored exoskeleton. We won't be able to get rid of him that easily. Our weapons are not dealing a lot of damage because he's packing an autonomous shield. Luckily, the scan we performed earlier revealed a weak spot. Attacking should bring the shield down. Shields down. Let's finish him off. Boy, it ain't going your way, you cunts. Okay, let's put him down and get this job over. That wasn't the smoothest raid, but we've got the bot, and Dex should be happy. But think back. What would have happened if we hadn't met with the Militech agent? or told Royce about the agent and her plans, or just decided to buy the bot ourselves. So many options, so many possibilities, and each will have consequences that will ripple through the game world and your story. And that's just one quest. Let's head out and finish the job. About goddamn time. Let's get out of here. together more often. Your chip had the clap. That's not discreet. You set me up. I fucked you over. You fucked the gang over. Somewhere at the start of the story, somebody fucked the corp. See how this works now? Only the corp gets what it wants. Remember that. Learn it. Years down the line, you'll be standing where I am, watching somebody else doing... Yep. Being a raging bitch to whoever's doing my dirty work for me. It's time we were on our way, Ida. Okay, let's Next call door. Dex and it's tell him how area. things went down. My girl, the shit eating suits. Mama not. Hey, Mr. Dex. Get us that table at the afterlife? Hmm, matter of fact, I did. Just in my gut and all, you know. Well, you were right to. <laughs> Well done, Missy. Well done. See you there. Shit, I can't believe it, Ina. Major Leagues. We're in. <laughs> I mean, we fucking pried the door open. About the only thing I want to pry open right now is a bottle of scotch. Oh, no. Not another three-nighter. Por favor. Need to get to know this city, Jack. Not just gun in hand. I'm on a crusade. Amen, I know. We finished the job. But hey V, you all right? <sighs> Let's do this. <sighs> you you out with this shit. Where are we? Al BBS. 
without a fortress. Bridge to the deep net. Welcome to the Cyberpunk 2077 2019 Deep Dive video. In last year's gameplay reveal, we showed you our vision for the world of Cyberpunk 2077, its quests, and visual design. This year, we'd like to give you a peek at some of the playstyles you'll be able to adopt as your character progresses through the story. Here goes nothing. You're about to see sequences embodying two distinct approaches to playing Cyberpunk. <laughs> We'll show you a strong solo build, that is, a character who focuses on employing blunt force and taking instant action. And a Netrunner build, a playstyle taking frequent advantage of stealth tactics, hacking, and battlefield control achieved using malicious software. Additionally, you'll learn more about Pacifica, one of the game's districts. Two gangs, the Animals and the Voodoo Boys. And you'll see glimpses of Johnny Silverhand, the digital construct who haunts our main character, V. A word of caution. Given that the video covers a section of the game deep into the main storyline, we have edited the footage to contain as few spoilers as possible. Be aware that the gameplay as presented does reveal characters and locations you'll see while playing the game's main story arc. So watch at your own discretion. Where are we headed? As Polaris' campaign promised, This way. In this video, you'll experience a segment of a quest from the middle of the game. We're currently in Pacifica, one of Night City's six unique districts. You know Pacifica well? Nah. You guys aren't exactly great at rolling out the welcome mat for outsiders. It was designed to be a tourist hotspot within the city. As you can see, this didn't pan out. When uncertainty struck the global economy, investors pulled their funding, leaving most establishments unfinished. It's one of those places where expectations and reality collided, resulting in a heap of disappointment. Ongoing gang wars plague this part of the city. Outsiders don't come here if they don't have to. Even by Night City's standards, it's dangerous to those unfamiliar with it. Taking a casual stroll here would not be a good idea. A fast motorbike or armor-plated car would be the safer option. But places like this have their advantages. If you're in need of rare goods or illegal cyberware, Pacifica's bustling local markets are a good place to start your search. The Grand Imperial Mall is a whole other story. It was one of the last developments in Pacifica to lose its funding. Until recently, it stood vacant, but now a gang called the Animals has moved in for reasons unknown. Something's not going right for the big guy up top. And that's what we need to learn in order to earn the trust of the Voodoo Boys, the Animals' rivals. What the hell? Could fucking tell me what you plan to do first. You take job. You do what I say. So you jack in now. Of the many gangs in Cyberpunk 2077, the Voodoo Boys are the most skilled at using the net. We have now seen the Nizu Hagwe on Subnet. Why? What for? You are my vessel now. Do Hagwe, I see what you see, hear what you hear. This mysterious gang of highly skilled netrunners has close ties to the local Haitian community. You are V? We have been waiting. Haitians settled in Pacifica in the 2060s after natural disasters struck their island and forced them to emigrate en masse. The Voodoo Boys gang formed around this same time, though at a smaller scale. Now the gang effectively rules Pacifica. The Voodoo Boys don't usually work with outsiders. Lucky for us, it seems they're prepared to make an exception this time. Mr. Han sent me. He said you got Murph work needs doing. Still, to earn their trust, we need to prove our worth. 
plant the seed, one of the voodoo boys higher ups has offered us a mission. We need to infiltrate the Grand Imperial Mall, currently occupied by the voodoo boys' deadly enemy, a gang called the Animals. 20, 35, 07. Three seconds before, poof, the camionette. We try to learn where the camionette come from. The animals are not your normal gang. Their presence in Pacifica is suspicious. They value might above all else and wear melee combat implants to raise their prowess in combat. Their beverage of choice is juice, a potent strength and speed enhancing concoction. As sought after bouncers, they're usually dispersed throughout town. As skilled street level business types, they've cornered the market in illegal substances and underground live or die prize fights. When they converge in one spot, it's for something big. It's then they appoint the fastest and strongest among them as their ad hoc leader. In this case, it's a woman named Sasquatch. Then you wanted my bet. No. As far as I remember, you said no bone brain buffaloes on steroids. I'm afraid that's the cost of doing biz. This is the tech Placide was talking about. It seems non-standard for the animals. And this is where we come in. Getting to the van won't be easy, but we're more than qualified for the job, which we can complete in one of many ways. The character creation in Cyberpunk 2077 is the kind you'd expect from a full-fledged RPG. You start by choosing your past, important because this unlocks special options at important story junctures. You also fully customize your character using a deep customization system that spans not only your look and style, but also your abilities. Cyberpunk 2077 does not feature fixed classes. Instead, it has a fluid class system that allows players to mix and match a wide range of abilities to suit their play styles. You can create a strong solo character, a skilled netrunner, or any other hybrid class you can imagine. Let's see how a solo play style in Cyberpunk 2077 might work. Solos prefer a direct approach. They use guns and might to get things done. So let's wreak some havoc. With our enhanced strength, we can strip this turret of its weapon to give the animals a taste of their own medicine. This is how a player investing in solo abilities might live out their Terminator power fantasy. Enhanced strength lets us force open doors. or grab enemies to use as human shields. We also gain access to powerful melee combat cyberware. So even someone as fast and strong as Sasquatch, the leader of this group of animals, is not impossible to beat for a solo. But Sasquatch has a different game plan. She's out to jack in and hack us. Let's see how this plays out. Ready for some fun? Oh, Proceed. What's going on? It's our choice if we want to finish her off or spare her. Your cyberpunk. Your rules. If you'd rather sneak around, hide, and strike from the shadows, no problem. Just develop your net running skills to get around obstacles or hack into enemy tech to have it do the dirty work for you. Head running abilities mean hacking skills that let us use our cyber deck to breach access points. For this, we fill the buffer of our cyber deck with a string of instructions represented by these letters and numbers. Matching the instructions for basic access grants us control of devices connected to this network. The more instructions we match, the more control we gain over elements in the network. We can hack our way through in numerous ways. A quick hack may grant us control of the security camera. Another one should let us tweak the difficulty of the training bot to create a distraction. Oh, you see that? 
With our nanowire, we can even hack this guy's implants from a distance. In this world, almost everything is connected to a local network. And that means it can be hacked. Ours is a wolf. Which brings us back to cyberspace. You don't get to do anything in the net unnoticed. There's always someone watching. It could be Corpos, or even worse, it could be Netwatch. And that is exactly the case here. Who is they? Netwatch. They always have to fuck us. Netwatch and the Voodoo Boys are like fire and ice. The first of these wants to maintain the old order and protect people from AI anarchy originating from beyond the Black Wall. The Voodoo Boys want to establish contact with the free AIs. They believe this will enable their boundless expansion on the net and grant them the upper hand over Netwatch. Netwatch sees this as the end of the world. Both are right. Whoa, hey. How you deal with the Netwatch agent is entirely up to you. Do we side with the gang? Choosing to be on Netwatch's bad side is never wise. But can we really trust the Voodoo Boys? You set me up! As you can see, we have many possible options. But in each case, we take a risk. I think I'll just stick to my plan. In the world of cyberpunk, few things go as planned. And that was just a glimpse of how complex the branching storyline in Cyberpunk 2077 can get. Every decision you make will have consequences. Your choices will shape how the world reacts to you and affect your relationships with those around you. One of those relationships is special. Ever heard of Johnny Silverhand? A rebel rocker boy who will be your companion throughout your adventure in Night City? Come on, really think they give a rat's dick how you look? Like everyone in Cyberpunk 2077, he has his own agenda. You'll decide if he'll be your ally or your enemy. And that chip in your head, the one thanks to which Johnny lives inside your mind. Well, that's a story for another time.